Whoa, what's are going we on? Live? We are live. Happy Thursday, Happy Thursday night everyone. to all of you. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, sir. Hello. 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 <laughs> I'll drink to that. Heck yeah. Mm. Mm. How are you all doing out there in virtual land? It is Thursday. We've got some folks already online. Got a fun show. Um, we're going to do not a a dram good time tonight. We're changing it up because we've got a, a bottle to review. So we're going to spend some time saying hi uh, to everybody. And then we're going to get into doing a review of a whiskey, um, an Indian whiskey. Wait, wait, hold, uh, we're going to review a whiskey? We're, we're actually going to review a what? whiskey again. I know it's been some time. I'm actually excited about it. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into why we're excited about it. But when we do the review, we're kind of going to put you guys on, a, uh, turn the screen off so we don't see that, and we're just going to be talking to the camera to kind of be able to reproduce a good old-fashioned review. Hone our senses like, and um, really... Like we used to do. <laughs> and then... After that, we'll kind of cut from that, and then we're going to do a deeper dive on Indian whiskey and why we're excited about it. I think a lot of you who have been following us for a while probably know that we wanted to, to start getting in and sp spreading our, our swim oh, yeah. lane a little bit and in, to American single malts, into Indian whiskeys, some of the whiskeys that are kind of on the rise and making really good stuff mm -hmm. that we should be aware of. So um, that's what's on the agenda for tonight. Probably a little bit more chat with you guys in the comments, too, because as you can see... It's just got two of us, two dummies. That's right. <laughs> so we may have some time for some Q and A at the end. So we'll we'll ask you to enter some uh, questions in the chat if you have some. You can put a Q uh, colon and then question. And we'll try to get to it at the end of the show. But uh, we actually might have some folks from the distillery in the chat tonight. Ooh, I know it's be cool. It's um, probably something like six or seven a.m. Um, in India, where the That's distillery brilliant. is located in Indri. Um, but I believe they have someone on the East Coast right now doing some, some business development. So he might be joining as well. So if there's let's questions that we some, can't answer, or maybe they can. Let's start with some people that are on here. Bob H. was first today. Bob? Really? Of yeah. course. Wesley, it's good to see you, my friend. Yes, sir. Uh, Mamuka. Mamuka. Mamuka 1977. Is that a birth year? Don't know, but don't good, know. good evening, good to, evening you, to you, too. Me, my wife, and whiskey. Don't have the Trini, but the Indian whiskey in the glass. Paul John. Can't go wrong. Um, Got it. Uh, and, and we will see you here soon, so you probably will have some of this. A little patron get-together. That sounds great. <laughs> Five for Sound. Good to see you on. He's got more 12-1. 12-1. Jeez. Is it that what, high now? I was just going to say, you, can someone put in the chat what Octomore is up to? <laughs> I, mean, we, we, I think it's actually 13 or what 14. What do we have? We, the first one we have was like what? Four? Four? Four one or something like that. Mm. It's been a minute. It has. Crafty Wheel, hello again. Good to see you. Welcome back again. Trooper Henry, top three tonight. Still offshore making bang for the liquor run. All right, That a boy. Um, someone asked what's in our glass. What are we drinking? We're I drinking think we're this, drinking, actually. We're drinking oh, some Compass Box. Some Compass Box uh, Artisan Blend. Or artist Blend. Trying to keep it simple since we have a review. Don't want to burn the palate out. Um, Got to give this a fair, fair shake. Whiskey and he said Indian whiskey dummies. <laughs> Indian whiskey for dummies. We are yeah. definitely dumb when it comes to this. Stephen Richard, good to see you. Bobby J in the uh -oh. house. Can't wait to see what aisle he's on later tonight. I oh. think he, I, I saw he boy he's been chatting. He might he's not be working luck. too hard well, yeah, tonight. He's Look at this chatting guy. Up here. He's um, Stephen A. Hey, Steve A. Steve A. Bob H again. Alan uh oh, Lund. is that Malin Mal? Maller. <laughs> Maybe later tonight, be shooting people with him. Hey, Zach. Some of our folks that we saw in the pre-show. Steven and Richard. Glenmo 12. Paulo Cotado. That's nice. Is that, is that a um, travel retail? I think it is. Or is that? I can't remember. I'm trying to picture the bottle. I know there's one Cobo or something. That's travel. Yeah, there's, there's Tane and Cadball, I think Cadball, it is. Cadball, that's it. Cadball yeah. State. Um, George is on. Oh my gosh! Hey, we Martin, I missed you in the pre-show. James, hello from Philippines. Hey, well, cheers to you. Right. It's good to see that. All I right. love it, man. Let's get on to this because we've. Oh, scroll up. I saw Sharon. Where? Keep going. Wait, it's past James. Keep going. Hang on a second. You, you were, you were flying by. I know. It's going quick. And it's, I, I saw a Sharon in there. There it is. 
Hi, so oh, Sharon is nice. actually in India. She's probably having a cup of coffee because uh, it's probably breakfast time for her. But uh, she said she would try to join. So thanks for joining, Sharon. We're going to get into a review of this bottle here uh, just in a few seconds. And, uh, and then we're going to come back and talk about it uh, outside of the view with all of you. So... Um, let's, let's, before we get into the review, let's talk a little bit of some of the details sure. that we don't want to school drum. me. Yeah. Right. So, um, injury is actually produced, um, in a distillery called Piccadilly, right? That's right. It's very Northern India, right? So it, it's the most Northern distillery in India, which means it's got a very different climate from Southern India. Um, and that actually has some interesting effects on the whiskey because it, the the range of temperature it changes drastically whereas southern india is pretty much hot isn't it true that hot. from our our <laughs> in whiskey distil the distillery discoveries if you will isn't a lot of the grain produced on the northern side of india yeah and it's decline? it's actually different different style a different type of um barley than they yeah. use in scotland it's six i think six row barley. that's right six row yeah um which is a little bit different obviously but um they are kind of, they're, I don't want to say they're the newest ones on the block, but they are definitely new in regards to some of the other distilleries that you all are familiar with in India. Um, and this is their first and only offering at the moment. Um, it is called Trini, which means three wood. Yeah, and what was that? What was it? Uh, Ex-bourbon? Um, red wine and PX. PX so right. the question is, well, isn't PX red wine? Yes, but we know PX is special, right? That's true. So, it's good stuff. Um, I'm excited about that because of the maturation. This, and, and we'll get into the details of this specific bottle. But uh, for the awards, dude. Jeez. Yeah, it's been very, it's it's been pretty prestigious. They've done very well for themselves, and they have some new stuff in the hopper. Um, so we'll talk about that after the review too. But uh, since it's just the two of us, we're going to dive into this. We're going to go through our typical review stuff of you know nose perception. Perception, um, palette, add some water, repeat, um, give it a score of one to four, right? You guys know the one, two, three, four. Uh, and then we'll close that down and then we'll get into it with you all and kind of get into the meat and potatoes of what uh, what they're doing um, at Piccadilly to produce injury. So I opened this before the show to make it faster, but we have not even uncorked it yet. So let's uncork it and pour while you talk some more. All right, you ready? So... Injury is uh, produced, it's a non-age statement, uh, Indian whiskey, single malt whiskey, I should not be clear about this. Um, I think if I'm taking a guess after talking to some of the folks at the distillery, it is non-aged, but it's probably got six to seven year old whiskey in it. Okay. Um, the distillery was commissioned in 2012, um, and they actually bottled their first bottling in 2020, so... I mean, that's nine years, right? But um, nevertheless, the ABV 46%? is 46%. As we, uh, I should say, as we mentioned, we haven't mentioned during the review, it is triple uh, maturation. So it is X bourbon, it is uh, X red wine, and X uh, PX yes. sherry. So natural coloring, non chill filtered. Um, right. I can, I it says it on the bottle. That does say it on the bottle, which is exciting because when I look at the color, um, it's a nice, lovely color, actually. Uh, nice, uh, I would say, caramely red, ruby red. Uh, that's that sherry. It's got to be that sherry it coming is. through, right? Yeah. The, the, the red wine in the PX is, is definitely coming through, and it's nice to know that that's where it's coming from and not E-130. That's, that's right. <laughs> 150. 150, whatever. Caramel coloring. Yeah. Um, but this actual bottle is January 23, so two thousand uh, January 5th, 2023. It is available in 25 states right now um obviously they're working to get to all 50 states it is available in our state that's what we I just don't have it local in any of our you know liquor stores um the yet. uh yeah yet so i know that vine and table uh vine and table up in carmel had bought quite a bit of it and so they have it available right now it's about 60 dollars retail at least here in indiana um so for what it's worth, you know, you're getting a pretty decent, uh, you know, ABV whiskey for $60, non-age. We'll see where it gets us. We'll see what it tastes here in a second, but I'm expecting something pretty good here. Triple cast, uh, I mean, great barrel choices, right? Obviously, experiment. The thing about Indian whiskey, just for our listeners, that I think is incredibly, it's kind of like, a, I think I, I remember saying this before, it's kind of like a Nintendo cheat code. They, they get the ghost things 
they do things a lot faster because it's so warm and hot there. It ages so much faster than it does anywhere else. Right. So this is this with those triple casts. I bet they've got some really nice potent flavors, especially with the sherry finish. So how long though? It's a question. I, I don't think there's an actual you know factual number here, but I think it, the the rumor mill is it's um, one year of mat- maturing in India is equal to six years in eight. Scotland. I thought it was eight. So yeah. I mean, think about it. So this is a non-age statement, but we know it's six to seven-year-old whiskey. So, so you think about it, and you're like, wow, you know, this is, it, it probably has a lot more maturation flavor than you think. You would think a, a for typical. a six-year-old. Correct. Right. right. Well, let's get into this guy and uh, nose it right now. Ooh, man. That is nice on the nose. It's actually a little fruitier, and it's, and it's so very rich. It's not, um, it's not unapproachable from an ABV perspective. It's not like you know going to blow your sinuses out no. or anything. It's got it's it's packed with it. It hit me the first one was an explosion of just overwhelming sensation of f- fruits, pineapples. Oh, wow. um, good good pull on the pineapple. A I, hint of black licorice too, maybe. I, I actually was getting some kind of spice. I was going to say cinnamon, but I'm not quite sure if it's cinnamon. But there's a, a, a spice note going on in there. Yeah, it's almost uh, grilled pineapple, I would say, where the pineapple has gotten a little bit more sweet and a little charring, maybe. Hmm. So I'm going to let that sit in air for a second before I put it on my palate. Um, we did warm up a little bit with uh, with some compass box, just so this doesn't you know, shock the palate when it hits it. But That is very pleasant on the nose. Um like you said, uh, it does not have so, for forty six. You, you shouldn't for forty six. I wouldn't expect a, a huge ABV ABV bomb in the nose, but it does come through with a nice bouquet. The the PX is very prominent to me. I yeah, I can smell the PX and it. it's got that PX sherry note in there. That and how do you describe it as opposed to Oloroso? Right, Oloroso is that leathery, dark red. Right, this is more of a fruity. Um, X wine and, and, and PX combo, right? That's that's an interesting too. Like I get a little bit of caramel on it too, so I got to find out what this is about. Now you know what else is in there? The tannic. The oh, there's there's some nice wood coming out in the nose as well. The oak. That's that barrel right there. Wow, on the late finish, I got a grape note that I did not expect. <laughs> It actually was a little bit more potent on the palate than, than I expected mm-hmm. for 46. And maybe that's some spiciness that's coming through from the whiskey. Um, Grape right up front. I get your pineapple on the long finish. On the, the way late finish, I got pineapple running down the middle of my tongue. Um, which I don't even know if they put pineapple on. Is that a tasting note we're supposed to be getting? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we're just crazy. <laughs> it's for sure there. It, it, it tastes like it smells. Quite honestly, um, my first initial taste was packed with fruit, um, but mostly tropical, like bananas, pineapple. I would even, <laughs> okay. this is probably getting too okay. crazy with tropical, but maybe even a, little bit, a hint of coconut in there as well. Like coconut with, with the, the husk and, and a little bit of that, the finish there was definitely woody. So after after taking a, a sip of it and going back in for nose, I'm definitely getting more prominent oak coming through on the nose. Done a good job with this. I want to see how. Oh it yeah, goes. there's. It's almost uh, the wood quality is that not, now that I've had a sip on the nose is definitely like almost sawdust, like new wood. Wow. It's definitely got a spicy pineapple note. So when you said new wood, I was going to say it too. I know that it's ex bourbon, but it almost could be confused for for new new if, oak. If if it smells like fresh, like so, it's like first fill. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now that now okay, so not nearly as potent on the fruit side on the nose after the first sip. The wood is actually coming through stronger on the nose. 
there there is some green grape in there too. I'm I'm telling you, I like it. I mean, I'm not saying that's off put. I just mm. it's just different. That's that wine. Wow. Okay, so let me let me think about this and, and from a perspective of putting a number in my head where I want to come in at before I put water on this. This is unique in the sense that. So we're, we're scotch fanatics, right? And we've got kind of a profile when it comes to tasting scotch and kind of things we, I don't know, I guess, taste and sense. But this has something in there. It just doesn't, I can't figure it out yet on, on the mid to finish palette. I don't know if it's. Oh, I, so I, now I the vanilla is coming out in the tapioca. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's got something going on there that is just unique. So I'm loving the complexity. I, it's it's definitely an evolving glass, which is fun, right? Um, I'm very appreciative that it's not over sherried because um, I think we're getting a lot more out of it as opposed to just putting a lot of sherry on it. On, on the can, I wanted to mention in this review, you know, this bottle's done very well. It's been out for, what, three years now. Um, but there's a, a plethora, love to use that word. Um, of awards? Of awards yeah. that they've done. Uh, so they're they're doing quite well. Yeah, uh, best Indian single malt and uh, World Whiskey Awards, um, gold in the uh, Spirits Challenge of 2022. Oh boy, it's got lots on here. Some of them I can't read because it's too small of a font. <laughs> but it, they've You're got old. a lot of golds and and doing well. Um, it's just amazing what they can pack into this. So I'm putting water on it, and I want to give it some time because the amount of complexity that, that it has neat, I'm, I'm very anxious to see what water does to this. Um, my hope is that it helps marry everything together even, even more and, and better. Um, I hope it doesn't split it up and make it more disparate. Um, it's, I, it's not viscous, and it doesn't, like you said earlier, it does not come across overly sherry. It's the balance of the cask or done well. Right. I, I love complex whis- whiskeys, but I, I love them when, when the complexity marries well together, right? It's not like it's not jumping from one to the next and there's no middle ground between. I like it to be like a wave as opposed to, I want it to be analog, not digital. Oh, boy. <laughs> to get to be a geek here. Jeez. <laughs> I know you relate. So the water really brought out the wood even more, I think. It did. But so, there's the, this caramel now that I didn't have before on the nose with water. But do you so. get any of that PX note anymore? No. No, I got. I, it gets darker caramel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, I, I, if you get deep in there, I can still pull some PX notes, but I think it's easy to confuse those PX notes because they're so far underneath it that it almost. Instead, you you smell a little bit of a burnt caramel on it. But yeah. if you get underneath that, it's really the PX note that's coming through. So there's more spice now with with in the in the uh, palate and in the finish. And almost you said burnt ca- caramel. That's definitely in the finish now that I didn't have before, which is kind of like a almost like a, a I don't know like a some kind of nugget or something. So I still get that little bit of a grape finish. On the, on the the early finish, like the late palate, early like finish, grape. Um, but honestly, what was interesting about this? So, so water definitely tamed it down. It took off the edges around it, which I didn't think it was edgy. I didn't mention that when I when I sipped it neat, but it did round it. But um, I, what's the word I'm looking for? You know that that smooth? No, no, <laughs> not smooth. Quite the opposite. Do you know when you you drink something that's got fizz or carbonation like champagne? Yeah. That effect that it has in your mouth, that bubbling effect. It almost I, I like I, pop rocks or something. Yeah, I get a little bit of that on as I'm as I'm pushing this down into the finish. So I'm gonna go in for one more taste, um, but I have an idea that I think I like it better without water. I don't know about that. Uh, I, I, I reserve the right to think about that. So, again, this is a very northern distillery, which definitely separates it um, from from what it's producing or how it's maturing its whiskeys. Uh, just a quick fact. Um, I think they're putting out something like, shoot, I have it written down, 40,000 barrels a year, um, something like that in, in the, the sheet. Uh, I know they have six pot stills, uh, Scottish-style pot stills. So they're, they're actually capable and able to produce quite a bit of liquid 
Um, and they, from what I had my conversation with them, they're putting more and more back. I mean, they're, they're building more dunnage. They're, they're, they're building. They're moving up. They're, they only have this expression out now, but I could definitely foresee in the next few years there's going to be probably two or three. Well, they're off range. to a great start. I mean, the, the awards alone, and, and I can tell you just what I'm tasting alone, this is a, this is a great whiskey. Um, I, I will say, and I'll go ahead and start if you don't mind. Um, you know, I, I think, I don't, did we say a price? Actually, it's not that bad. I think it's only like 50 bucks. 60 bucks. $60. Now, non-age. Right. So it, now I happen to know that it is six to seven year old whiskey because I spoke with them, but it's non age on the bottle. So is, is that worth $60? Let's compare it to other non age whiskeys, right? I mean, what's a 12 year old going for? 50 to 60 bucks. Oh, yeah, easily. Um, it just, that just depends. I mean, honestly, I, I'm not writing about I, I think, okay. So for sixty dollars for an Indian non-age whiskey, knowing that it's going to have a, a different year maturation speed up, right, if you will, um, that alone plus what we know we're getting in here, I, I will say that there there are two different to me there are two different uh, profiles here with water and without. I think without water, straight up, the forty six. By the way, is it's very easy drink. It, it does, it's not overly potent on the alcohol at all um but it was so much more tropical um without water and especially on the palate as well um i had so much we talked about the pineapple for the grilled pineapple um, i had some coconut um bananas there's some there's some caramels in there there was some sherry right um not a whole lot of sherry but there was some sherry in there um and then that there was some wood initially but it wasn't very potent but when I brought the water on there, it really brought up the wood finish more and kind of reduced some of the fruits that I was look, enjoying personally. Um, the palate was still pretty good on the palate with water, um, but I think it changed a little bit of the uh, the profile for me. I maybe added too much water. I don't know. But regardless, both of them are still good. Uh, $50 for what we know is Indian whiskey and what they're doing. Um I, I actually really enjoy this glass. Um, I, I'm going to give this a strong... I'm close to a three here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with a three in this one. I think, it's, I think it's pretty damn good for what it is. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so listening to your, your review there and, and talking yourself through your number, I poured some more... Um, whiskey in my glass because i wanted to come back and revisit it neat because you really were high on the neat and i liked the neat but i also liked the water um i agree with you there are two different pro flavor profiles i think it definitely changes uh with water and does get more woody you lose a lot of the um the other notes the the red wine and the px notes they're still there but i really like those notes i mean I really liked the flavor profile neat. I liked the mouthfeel and the approachability with water a little bit better. Um, but I, I, I'm not knocking it either way for one or the other. Let me let me take a sip of this neat one more time. I feel like this right now, I just poured some more like you did. And right away, I've, I'm back in, in love with it again. The nose is what I have. This to me is like... Don't mess with the sushi. The chef knows what he's making, right? Don't put water on it because it's done, it's done the way it should be poured out of the glass. It's you. You can pour whatever you want to. You can put ice on it, whatever you want. It's, it's your own You're personal right. pro profile. But the way it is right out of the bottle is money. It's great. You're right. You're right about that. So I, I, I'm ready to roll this up then. So if... <clears throat> If you are someone that really likes to put water on your whiskey and, and you don't like to drink it 46 or even 40, you want it, you know, water down to 38, 35, whatever that may be, um, it's fine. It's good. It's it's enjoyable. But if you want to get it at its best, I, I do think it's neat. Um, or oh. or maybe just one drop. Yeah. I, it's it, Keep it where it's supposed to be. Um, I, I really like the marriage of the three different maturations here. I, I think they did a really good job. There's a lot going on in the glass. There's a lot of complexity, and, and none of it's fighting each other. It's not, you know, jumping from uh, hot to, to cold and, and light to dark. And it, it's really a, a nice 
you, you can spend some time in there and find a lot of different flavors um, on the nose, palate, and finish. Um, I thought it was really interesting. There's a lot of tropical fruits in there that I didn't quite expect. Um, but I like the fact that I could still get a little bit of that PX in there because I'm a sherry bomber, you know. Um, it's funny you were talking yourself into this, and you're, I, I thought you were going to say a number that I'm going to say. And I don't want to sound like I'm coming over the top, but I was going to give this three five, and I thought you were talking your way up to three five. I'm like, damn, he's going to make it. Some, I'm just following suit, but I really enjoy this. I think this is really, it's <laughs> exciting to me because I'll be honest, we've we've now gotten into I don't know four or five different Indian whiskeys, maybe half a dozen, and it's promising as hell. I really I mean, enjoy what they're doing over there. For some reason, I, I have this, and this I, there's no truth to this. This is just my opinion, but it seems like the Indian distilleries have really paid attention to Scottish distilleries and, and the process. Not to say that, you know, American single malts haven't, but American single malts are also very heavily influenced by the, the American bourbon industry and stuff. And I, I, think, I think India just really paid much more attention, and they're really reproducing something that's in our wheelhouse. Yeah, our our valley, 100%. Right? Yeah. I, I, I think uh, you're absolutely right with what they've done with this bottle. I think, honestly, kudos, great job, for, especially for your inaugural launch of a bottle here. I, I can't wait to get into some more what you have coming out, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that here in just a second. Yeah. But uh, kudos to you for what you've done with this. Uh, you know, if, if I had a, a wand and say, what can I make this better? I would say a little heavier on the PX. Give me a little bit more PX on this. Other than that, There's your Sherry Bomber I, would, I, want, I want a little bit more PX to, to, to pull through and to give it maybe even... You know, the one thing that I would love to see out of Indian whiskey, and I have not had it yet, is some funky. Something something to give me funk, like well, a Campbelltown. I don't know if they can do that. I don't that. think they can do that, but that would, I, I would think maybe getting into the PX or something like that, you might be able to play with that some more. But mm. absolutely delicious, Jerem. So to, to wrap this up, this is... Uh, Injury Trini, produced by Piccadilly uh, in northern India. It's $60 a bottle, give or take, here in the States. It's available in 25 of the States, 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural color. And from the two of us, this is a three, two, five. Yeah, absolutely. Go If you have this bottle in your area and you can find it. It's worth it. I think we highly recommend, especially $50, $60, whatever it is, highly recommend to go give it a try. And if you're not into Indian whiskey yet, you deserve to get that door open as well because they're making some fantastic stuff over there. Thoroughly enjoy it. So, injury training, three, two, five. Well done. Nice work. Hmm. All right, now that's done, and you can do a splice on that video. A um, lot of questions that are coming in here. I saw James, Wheelhouse Whiskey, wants to know. Okay. Uh, Wheelhouse, you'll love it. It's not a sherry bomb. I'm not no. going to say it's not, and I know you're a sherry bomber. But I think you will thoroughly I think you'll appreciate, appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes. For 60 bucks, I think, how is it compared to Kavalon? So, to me, you say Kavalon, I think Sherry Bomb Bomb. I think of, right. I think of like, serious, like... Syrup. Syrupy Coke. <laughs> right. Like, Kavalon. This is not that. Um, but it does have your PX notes in it. it there are some, some bourbon notes in it. There are... Uh, it, it's some very interesting flavors um, on the palate, and then even on the finish. And some... Interesting mouthfeel for me. I really got a, a champagne note. I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, how do you describe that? And uh, if my my good friend and our patron George were here, he would tell me. But um, I really enjoyed it. So some of the things I wanted to talk about about this distillery. For number one, they're coming out with their second release uh, bottle here um, in August. As I think is when it's going to hit here in the states. So what month and I have two months. Let's just say, and it's base. It's called. Um, Injury Drew. That's a great name. So D R U. Come on, not 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 this. This stuff. should be this right here. <laughs> but I'll um, be your sponsor. The the description that I've gotten for what that bottle is is basically Injury Trini at cask strength, um, which I'm excited as hell about now. Right. So now I know well, what this yeah. tastes like. You're gonna give me more whiskey. In my whiskey. Well, now, now, now I'm really curious about the playfulness of the water, right? Because I feel like, and I, I, I may have overwatered it. I mean, you did it too, though. You had the same kind of conclusion. But I, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. You know what? It would be nice is I'm gonna pour a little bit more here and let it sit. Let, let, just let it sit there and see what happens, just with air. Right. Um. So a couple of other things. Let's let's talk about you know. So there's some other you know obviously notable Indian um, distilleries out there, right? Someone was drinking uh, Paul John, right? Yeah. Um, Amrut, 
uh, Rampure, I think. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, th- there's, they're out there, and they're they're doing good stuff as well. What makes these guys a little bit different is their location is is absolutely crazy, and the fact that their summers can get up to let's say 110, 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and their winters get down into the 30s. Yeah. So. As opposed to your southern Indian uh, distilleries where it's literally just hot all the time, imagine Kentucky, right, or bourbon distilleries. So they're constantly dealing with the heat. They're probably rotating casks in their dunnage houses, you know, to, to, to fight with it. Whereas here at, at, uh, at Piccadilly, they're, the weather's doing that for them. And think about what happens to the wood when it gets real hot, it opens up, and then it gets real cold in six months, and it closes down. So it's there's if you think about what's going on in the cask, there's this breathing as- oh, yeah. aspect that's going on like this that's really pushing flavors in and out of the wood. Um, I know that they lose a ton on their angel share, angel share as well, but um, so there's got to be a cost associated with that. But it's it's interesting just where they're at and what makes Indian whiskey different. And more interesting is the fact they're using different barley. I would love to be able to just take some distill it from six row barley and distill it from two row and have it side by side to see the different flavor profile in the barley. I really, I, to me, that would be very educational and interesting. Yeah, I, it would be really cool, like to, to just, I mean, it'll never happen, but just to have, like, give me all of your distillates of all these different places to let you try. Like, how much. How much do you think it would change? I mean, I would bet there would be there would obviously be a big difference between different continents, like in you know India. Sure, I mean for sure, right? But like in Scotland, like how much of that is distillate versus maturation? Well, I I mean I think we all agree that maturation plays probably the biggest Huge. part in it. But if you've spent time visiting distilleries, okay, and I don't care if they're Scottish or, or American bourbon, whatever, and you do the distillery tour, you're usually going to get at least a little tongue wetting of, of, of their distillate. Yeah. And when you've sampled enough of it, there is it's just like sampling whiskey. You get to the point where your palate's acclimated oh, and you pull out those flavor I'm, profiles and those notes. So It's super high proof, too, so it's right. going to burn your tongue off. But it's there, and but you get there. used to it, and you're like, oh, this distillate's got this quality, this you know flavor, or this n- note. Um, it's we, just- we, okay, so to be fair, we've, we've done this, and I know, to me, I've had enough samples of it to know that sometimes when you drink it, you're like, oh, that tastes young, because you, you know what that distillate tastes like. But I don't, I've not had enough of it. To, to be able to taste those intricacies to your point. Because if you right. think of master distillers, they're they're constantly doing this and they're tasting right. changes and what flavors and stuff are coming through. And I can't imagine that. And, I think and, that happens at your smaller new distilleries a lot more than your big ones. I think the big ones have it down to a chemical process. It's all automated and chemical where it hits a specific ABV or whatever and it's cut. You know what I mean? Sure. But um, interesting, a uh, quick note for everybody at home. Uh, we're going to get to these comments and, and, and questions here in, in just a second. But just so you guys are aware, um, we are lining up uh, to have um, a, a rep from Indry uh, on the show in August when we obtain a bottle of the Drew. So when we get the, the new release of the cask strength um, injury offering, we're actually going to do a live um, and pull in someone from from injury from Piccadilly, if you will, uh, to be on the show. So if you've got questions, if you're curious, if there's something out there that you want to know, we haven't been able to answer it, or there's a question in here that we're going to read and we can't get it. Um, I think we'll be able to get an answer to that here in August. Hopefully, it's in August. That's when we're expecting things to hit on the shelf, anyway. So I don't know if if Wesley's still on, but do you know what this? There, there's a there's a subtle hint to it. It reminds me of McMara. Really? Yeah. Which is, I think, uh, I was I was drinking this earlier. I was thinking that Kristen Wesley would really appreciate this whiskey. Hmm. It's kind of up their wheelhouse, if you will, of of, of that kind of uh, palate. So let's see what's going on with the uh, with with the comments here, right? I, there was, there's probably a ton that we missed. Oh my gosh! Hang on, Tom's here. Tom's on his epic journey with his brother and his father. Um, they're traversing the upper uh, north northwest of the United States via train. 
Tom, it's good to see you. I hope you're enjoying it and drinking all the good whiskey that you took with you. I know he is. <laughs> but um, I wanted to see if there was any good questions about this specific bottle because if there are, I want to get to them. Um, so uh, interesting point. Corey mentioned something about Solera. Um, when I talked to one of the representatives, uh, Sharon, she's on um, I don't know if she's still on um, drinking her coffee. Uh, I asked her if uh, if this bottle is produced um, via a Solera vat or not, and she wasn't quite sure. So maybe that's a question for uh, her colleague. Um, I spoke to him this morning that I can get some of that information on how they're how they're coming up with this. It's a single malt, but let's be realistic. We know what that means in definition. They're they're actually marrying casks together, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're marrying it in a, in a Solera vat for this uh, for this bottle. Michael says he's never had an Indian whiskey or a Camel Town or a Japanese whiskey. Well, Michael, I wow. think you need to do this. I think you need to try this, my friend. Um, a Campbelltown's there's there's a funkiness there's they're unique and it used to be the Scotch capital of the world so you got to spend some time there yeah um, for sure with those bottles but the Indian whiskeys are really on the up I really think there's some good ones I've not out had there. a bad one yet I mean Honestly. there's not been one that I've said no I I wouldn't drink this that's for sure <laughs> Bobby J almost dropped a four pack of paint when you said smooth when I said smooth. you said smooth don't put that on me. <laughs> funny that is good uh, grand reserva and it was good but not 250 i don't i don't know if i've had that before uh, you, i think we have um Maybe I, we have. and i'm not gonna i i, I kind of am in, in agreement there but james is is our uh philippines uh, guy tonight he's gonna have to order a bottle now <laughs> So 32, 32 yeah, yeah. so so 32 pounds 32 and a half pounds okay that's yeah so that's 50 bucks yeah, I, I think uh, you won't be honestly. You won't be disappointed if if you if you like Scotch whiskey, this is up your wheelhouse for that. Right. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm gonna have another glass of it. Um, yeah, I already I, poured some. I'm definitely enjoying that more than my uh, my compass box. But I mean, let's the compass box was well, just a starter. There's a lot of fittish talk in here. So jazz. That's real, that Grand Reserva. Yeah. So I, I, he went to a jazz show the other night. He had some options, red label, black label, and, and Glenn Fittick, 12. Fittick was hitting the spot just fine. Yeah, well, out of those combos, for sure. Um, obviously, is this, there's a difference between black label and, and smokiness, but um, Glenn Fittick, 12, is it's a, I it's mean, a, it's it's a great It's a great bottle. I would never for, turn it. For a basic bottle, it's great. Uh, out of those three, I think it would come down to whether I'm in the mood for a little smokiness or not. And if it's smoky, it's black label. If it's not, it's the 12. Yeah, for sure. Um, we already talked about that. Um, what else we got here? Her good things about, I don't know what that is. I don't know what Demetrios in Seattle is. I see Eric's going back to the to the motherland. Yeah, I'm so jealous. Of yeah, that. I don't want really to talk about it. Yeah. Have fun, Eric. Safe travels to you, brother. <laughs> Can you taste the youth, says Wheelhouse Whiskey. I, um... I don't know. I don't think so. Other than I would, no. I said in the in the review the the wood kind of tasted young there. So, I, but I think that's probably just probably that's the fresh, cask. Fresh how yeah, how what, barrel? I don't think they're spent. I don't think it's a whiskey. Yeah, I don't. Bourbon barrels. I don't. I don't taste any new make or anything like that in it or young. So, it doesn't taste young at all. Like if. If you poured this blind for me, I wouldn't say it was young. I wouldn't say it was super old either. It still comes off strong when I re-pour it. Okay. Oh, so we caught up with them. Yeah. yeah. Hot dang, that was easy. So I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly excited about what they have to offer here in the, in the future. And, and we're talking about two months away. So, I mean, we're actually a little bit late to the game when it comes to injury, Trini, right? So it's been out since 2020. Yeah, let's be fair to ourselves and say there was something that happened in the, in the world. But um, it's I know got there's a lot of spice to it. It does. There's, and you know, there, it's, since it's been out since 2020, there are plenty of other reviews out there. I have not watched a single one of them. To be honest with you, when, um, when they reached out to us, 
I was like, oh, cool, let's, yeah. And we were talking to our patrons about it um, on the pre-show and the post-shows that we do. Uh, and, and there are some of our patrons that have the bottle in their possession already. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it. Didn't get too too much into the water and details about it because we knew we wanted to review it. I, I really don't like to go out and watch a bunch of reviews about a bo- of a bottle that I'm going to review because I want to come into it oh, fresh. Oh, sure, yeah. Right. But, um now that I've gotten into it, I, I want to talk to those folks about who has it. So, what, Eric, good question. You know, um, Indian whiskeys compared to Texas whiskeys, we are actually a little, what? What's this mean? A little bond. Uh, I do not know what bond is. Am I getting too old, Eric? Compared with Texas whiskeys, we're actually a little before on. I don't know what that means. Can't help you with that question. Uh, but whiskey, Indian whiskey, compared to Texas whiskeys, I mean, it's a different profile. I really do think it's a different profile. There and and now that I've come back to this, there is there is spice definitely. <laughs> there is a spicy note, but it's a there's a, the spicy note is followed up with a nice vanilla note from the oak. I'll say that. How, yeah, it, I think that uh, it's a cl- the climate wise, Texas is obviously hot, but uh, I think not uh, India. I, I think what I talked about um, in in the review a little bit was the the fact that I I think the difference is. Texas whiskeys, American single malts included, f- seem to follow more of the American influence. And that influence comes from the bourbon industry. I, I really think that Indian whiskeys fall more in line with Scottish distilleries. I, and maybe it's because there's been a, a closer relationship with that. You know, Indian uh, distilleries, when they started up, they're like, okay, we want to do this. Where do we go? We go to Scotland to learn. And there's there's partnerships in scottish distilleries in india where you know they're sending scotch uh whiskey to india or or indian whiskey to scotland to to mature and bottle and stuff like that so i'm that's just my my opinion i i I don't you know for for what it's worth i'm a dummy yeah they're sharing secrets of the trade if you will right because i i know it do you remember we went to new jersey and we met with a that uh, small distillery out there, I don't, I don't remember the name. Jane. Of it. No, that was it was different than that one. But we went. It was the last time we went with Bob, with. Uh, oh Bob yeah, H. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked to him, and he did the same thing. He was over in Scotland, and, and he kind of. Well, that's where he learned. Apprentice, yeah. apprenticeship right. over there. Yeah. So, um, that was a really like they're making some good stuff too. I, th- I think that it's very common for a lot of people to, to learn how to make it. It's, it. There's so many other things I think people don't realize that go into making whiskey about maturation, climate, environment, not just about combining what you, to make the good, you know, whiskey. It's, it's all about the technique, where it's located, all the extra things that you may not have, right? That guy was in New Jersey. He didn't have hot temperature. He had to deal with his environment there to, to mat- mature. Right. And, and, when I think about visiting that distillery, you know, this distillery is huge. I mean, they, I don't know, you know, who funded it, where they came from or how they, but they didn't start off with, you know, small little stills. They started off with six huge, huge ass Scottish style pot stills and started making whiskey. Well, it's <laughs> right. true. I mean, they, this, this company has capital to right. begin with. Because, I mean, didn't you say they're making, is it gin or something so else? So they, they are making um, a rum juice. I'm not quite sure what that is. A sugar cane rum juice. And I don't know what that is. It's uh, something that we saw on some of their, their um, material they sent us. Well, because a lot of new distilleries, right, bourbon, scotch, it doesn't matter who it is, a lot of them will... To offset the time waste of, sure, they will make you know gin, gotcha, gotta have cash, vodka, whatever to start selling something. So, yeah, it makes sense there, but it doesn't seem like these guys are hurting. No, I, there was there was one other point that I had asked. I, I talked with them uh, over the phone, and I can't remember why you were talking. Someone asked on a comment as well. Um, if I would say that I prefer Indian whiskey to Japanese whiskey, and and I honestly say I would, you think so? Uh, I I I do. Um, I think it hits my profile better. 
Japanese whiskey so far to me has been a, I, I don't have a great explanation for it other than um, I've not had anything that's super complex. It's almost like it's all ex bourbon. Like it's not, I, I've not had anything that's been like, whoa, there's a huge p- sherry bomb. No, it's all kind of the same profile for me. Very delicate, almost like Johnny Walker Blue. It's very delicate. It's got some good flavor. You have to really dive in there and search for it. Whereas Indian whiskey is just like, they're going to punch you in the face. With well, flavor. My problem is, is knowing what Japanese industry, whiskey industry has done over the years, it's hard for me to really get on board with them. I mean, their their standards were non-existent to the point where they could literally True. just buy whiskey from anywhere, ship it to Japan, put it in a bottle, throw a, a Japanese label on it. I think Eric's question on comparing it to Taiwanese whiskey, as like James Wilhouse Whiskey asked earlier, um, I think that's a better comparison. I think the Taiwanese whiskeys, and I haven't had many Kavlons that weren't heavily sherried. Um, I know they do produce them. There was one, I think, that Tom uh, R. gave us, yeah, and it was one. decent, but... Most of them, when you say Kavlon to me, I think last, I think heavy share. This is the bomber's bomb, right? Yes. This is not. The Indian whiskeys I've had are not that. No, this is definitely not that. This, is, this, has, this has like uh, combinations. Like this is delicacies. So Sharon responded, and so they're making their run. Rum uh, Kamakara from, from pure, pure cane, cane juice, juice and not molasses as it mostly done in India. So I'm, it's, I wish Tom were on the show tonight cause he's the rum head, yeah, right? He's the rum head. Um, so I'm sure he would like start throwing questions at her. Like what was this? Uh, um, but that's, it's just not my wheelhouse. I'm not, I'm not educated on it. Yeah. I'm punch you in the face guy more than a smoothie fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you, then you're like, right. You're like, I honestly, uh, what, like I said earlier, what, the bottles that we've tasted so far from from India, it's, it's been great. Honest, a lot of them. This one is right up there with it. So, so one kudos. of the questions I asked Sharon when I spoke with her, and and this is, um, and not really so much about the whiskey was, you know, when we've spent time and we've been to Scotland, we've 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 spent some time there. We've met a lot of uh, uh, people that in the in the Scottish industry, whether they're ambassadors or master distillers or whatnot, and. The irony in Scotland is the thing that that I found very interesting that you never hear is, yes, there's a hundred and let's say 40 distilleries in Scotland today that are competing. They're competing for your, your dollar. Yeah. They're all, but even though they're competing, they're almost, they realize that they all are in the same game and there's a benefit to each other. So they, they actually help each other to a sense. There's a lot of incest going on. (laughs) Sure. And, you know, I'm I'm working over here at, at um, Glen Goyne. You're over there at Deanston, and I'm like, I, I I got a problem going on in one of my my mash tons. Something something's you know the milk's gone bad. You know, I pick up the phone. I'm like, Drew, have you ever seen this? And you're like, Yeah, yeah, I have. You need to change out this, or you need to do that. You know what I mean? They they actually do that. That happens. There's insider talk. There, it's a it's a community. Yes, they know they're competing against each other, but they also realize that their success relies on each other. Everyone's success Kinda comes like, together. Uh, when you're watching a golf show and the caddy goes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's against the rules, yeah, you know. It's they the go, rules. right? Five iron. Um, it's five iron. And and I I, uh, I asked if if that was kind of the sentiment in India because there's not that many distilleries in in, in India right now right so it's still an, a a young newer game and I it's not that way I'm not saying they don't get along but I think they're much more focused on each other and their own in, interests if you will. So I just poured kind of somebody's going to ask in a second I just poured a. Uh, Hart Brothers, uh, Glendronic. Where'd you get year old. that bottle? I don't know. I'll be son of a bitch. But, but it's, it's a zebra, so I thought we could go ahead and. But uh, this, this bottle tonight is, uh, it's got so much potential with spiciness and stuff. And I'm like, I want to go down a little bit more of a sherry road. And this is where we're going. 
Oh, so that's what you why, that's why, you why I, that? that's why I poured this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, to put a fine note on on Indian whiskey, right? We're obviously going to get into more of them. We're going to have some folks from uh, from Injury from Piccadilly here on the show in a few months, and excited about the next bottle. But I'm also excited about other offerings that are, are coming out of India because I think that there's there's a lot of potential there. Um, I'm still excited about American single malts. I think American single malts are definitely on oh, the rise. There's a we ton are, of potential there. We are so behind on that. Like we have, <laughs> but we have so many to review. There's so much opportunity. Honestly, in the whiskey world in general has a lot to offer. There's so much going on right now. It's like that's half the problem. This confusion. I mean, Jesus, have you ever looked at a gun down to Kentucky and look at a liquor store? I mean, the <laughs> shelves are unbelievable with bourbon. Right. So like how there's so many options out there to pick from here comes india here comes Jap- japan here comes Scotland, taiwan here, taiwan i mean good lord Ho- hopefully we're helping with you with some of these decisions but i can tell you that what india what these guys are doing here right now is fantastic and i'm excited for that i'm excited for american single malt uh you know let's keep going and i i, I hate to say it but as much as I love scotch, and I do, I love them all. I, I'm a scotch whore, but there's there's not as many new offerings and exciting things coming in uh, out of the scotch market. There's a lot of good stuff out there, and yeah, there's your bottle here or bottle there, but it just seems like some of the newer, younger markets, if you will, they're they're scrapping because they're new, they're, they're young, seriously they're like, scrapping. I'm coming, you know, they've got to fight yeah. their way to get in the game and get noticed. And so they're really putting their best foot forward, which you can't blame them. Um, so you pay attention. You yeah. know, don't be afraid to try a sixty dollar bottle because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and and probably end up buying another one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Corey's calling us out, Mark. I mean, and he has every right to do so. But years <sighs> half gone, boys. We we so ironically that. enough, I I was looking at the SMWS today, Corey, and they actually have a couple of SM our American, American single malts. Um, and I'm a huge SMWS fanboy. I mean, I I've always uh, once I learned who they were and what they were all about, I've been involved uh, with supporting them. So I, I probably need to pull the trigger on a couple of those because I think it'd be interesting to see what SMWS is bottling on the American single malt front, for, as opposed to the new distillery. But, um, yeah, I guess we, uh, you know, he's he, he just called it. You know, do well, you push it, your it, chips it, in or well, what? <laughs> we, we, we've got some bottles to do, um, and we just need to get them done. So, yeah. I, honestly, it's it's not like we're not ready for it. We just need to get – here. honestly, here's a problem. They're not easy to get. So we've got to make connections to get them in here and, and – Find a way they have bottles for us to review. We've got a few. We've got some ideas. Hell with that, I want to buy. I want to bottle one of their barrels. That's what I want to yeah. do. Absolutely, if, Tom if, Harper. Tom Harper on Highland Park Twelve. Looking forward to trying it. You've All not right, had Tom. It. Okay, that's a great question. Okay. This is the right community to ask that question to. I think it's Highland Park Twelve core offer, core offering from Highland Park. I think it's a good step. Um, it's a tough question to ask me because my palate's so burned out on Pete that I don't even get Pete I, on Highland there is, Park I mean, it, anymore. It, a hint, if anything, of Pete but in that. I'm a huge Highland Park fan. Mm-hmm. I, I love what they're capable of doing. Um, I think they kind of got lost in the sauce with the Viking marketing scheme. But the core expressions, the 12, 15, 18, are good, gooder, and gooder, gooder. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah, you, you honestly, yeah, Highland Park Twelve. Of course, I, 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 I think everyone should have a bottle of it on their bar. Highland Park Fifteen is a little bit better. Well, it's a lot better. Highland Park Eighteen is even more better. Which can you even find Eighteen anymore? You can, and you can find the old bottling of it. It's still out there. That's I've cool. got a couple of uh, 145, 150 it's not, bucks. That's not actually bad if you can no. still find it. I would buy a bottle. Of no, I, I've it's got awesome. a couple of them stocked away because I, Park, I do. It is a staple, man. It's, it it's, it's a good bottling. It's, good. it's like it's like a Ford. It's like you got everyone loves that. Like Highland Park is out there, Glen um, you know, Old, Old Pulteney. These these are bottles that are flying off my tongue right now because there's just like classics you gotta go for. So Highland Park twelve. If you've not had it, what's it go for? Like 
60 bucks probably probably i don't yeah i mean know. it's ex- maybe a little bit expensive but not that bad for 12 year old i would i would pull a trigger on if you've not had it before it's it's good you'll, you'll enjoy it mm-hmm. About it's much- actually it's it's not a, a huge peat you know in no. your face it, if you're not acclimated to peat in any way shape or form it you might say oh this is peaty but i, I don't even pull not it. punch you i don't go because I, I have a bottle upstairs that i go to every once in a while i'm like i I don't go to it because I want Pete. I go to it because I want the Highland Park uh, brand, like I, their profile. What I like about their Pete is it's different. <laughs> it's not Isla Pete. It's not you know that that ash, uh, uh, creosote, you know, yeah, fire, yeah, Pete. It's it's a heathery, lighter Pete note. But oh um, man, that's awesome! Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that uh, comment. Well, I hope you enjoy your Highland Park 12. Now you have to come back to us after you've tried it, and you have to let us know what you think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Come back and let us know. Well, Mark, let's cut this early and hit our um, patrons here. And this we is do need show. to do that. It was fun. I, I really want to tell everybody, if you're interested in, in injury anyway, come back. Make sure you stay tuned for the August time frame. We need to schedule this because we got to make sure that they, you know, the bottle is available um, in the States. But really looking forward to the cast strength offering. Um, Corey, you called us out. You're absolutely right. We got to get uh, we got to get some American single malts out here in front of you. Um, and I, it's not just the whiskeys. I want to get the people that are actually making the whiskeys here because there's a there's an opportunity setting standards, setting where this industry is going, making it happen, being a part of that, um, as opposed to just going to the liquor store and buying a bottle. <laughs> One hundred percent. Anyway, um, cool. I I want to say thank you to Indri for uh, allowing us to to get into this bottle. I really enjoyed it. We're gonna. This is this is a dead bottle walking. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna drink this bottle. Yeah, but uh, we're gonna go to our post show, our, our post show with our patrons, and next week I think we. I let's think we're time actually out. off. We're we're gonna be off for at least a week, maybe two weeks. Cause yeah, you've got some travel going. Town. Drew, Andrew, Andrew's over the pond right now, tromping through Ireland, Scotland, and the UK. I'll tell you what, patrons, we'll make it happen each week, but for a live show, it probably won't be happening for a couple of weeks. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll come back. We'll hit the American Single Malts. We're going to hit some more Scotch reviews. Yep. We've got some more yep. damn good times coming up. We uh, do. we got lots of stuff coming up, uh, so stay tuned. So until then, I appreciate you all tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you go out and try a bottle of this, and uh, we'll see the patrons here in just a second. Cheers. Cheers. Three, two, one.